Depressed and disease control the topic. <laughs> Hello, good morning and welcome to the mid-morning show. I hope you are doing well wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us this morning as we'll be tackling our topic of today. My name is Mary Oswero. And my name is Regina Ayanai. You can follow us on our social media platforms. We are live on YouTube at A Farmers Media, on Facebook at A Farmers Media, on Twitter at A Farmers with a Z underscore media, and on our website www.afarmersmedia.com. Tag yeah. along with us as we will be talking about our main topic of the day, and there will be, we'll also be updating you on the weather updates. And don't forget that this is a mid-morning show, the one and only show that brings the farmers and also fuels the desire of our farmers mm -hmm. in their farms. Ayan, yes. good morning. Ah, morning. How Mary. are you? I'm good. <laughs> How's your morning? My morning was good. Mm -hmm. It was nice. I woke up very happy mm -hmm. and I'm really glad that I'm alive. Are and you excited about this show? Yeah, I'm excited about this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know I'm going to educate through this a farmers media show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to educate people. I know uh, people will be able to grow learn and get many other tips mm -hmm. through this topic of um, of pest and disease control. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, before we dive into the topic, first of all, please take us through the weather updates. Okay, today, mm -hmm. wherever you are, uh, I know, just get outside and look at the sky and tell me, how is the sky today? Anyway, in Mombasa, it is most cloudy with a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. In Kajiado, where we are right now, it is partly cloudy. And in Kisumo, it's partly cloudy with a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. And in Nairobi, it is 19 degrees Celsius. And it is most cloudy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is our weather updates for today. We have mentioned some of the counties. And uh, I hope wherever you are, you can be able to also update us in uh, any weather updates. Yeah, definitely where you are, please update us. If you've not heard your county, just update us so that our audience can also know mm -hmm. uh, the weather updates of the counties that we have not mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now, today we have a very interesting topic. Actually, we're just going to dive into the topic directly because it's a very interesting and a wide topic. Mm -hmm. We won't even be able to finish it today. Yes. But don't worry, tomorrow is also another day. Tomorrow we'll be here with the same topic, with the continuation. For, so for today, uh, stay put, ensure you stay tuned. Tune in so that you get to know more about what we are going to talk about today. Yes. Uh, this morning we have a very interesting topic. Our main topic of the day is a pest and disease control. Yeah. Uh, specifically in uh, maize plants. We are going to talk about maize plants yeah. that are grown in semi-arid areas. Yes, and I know most of the counties or most of the people uh -huh. are using maize as their staple food. Yes. You know, maize is staple food for a lot of people outside there. Ugali. Yeah. Mm. Maize is, is used to, you know, some people know just maize is used to make flour mm. and that is it. No, maize is, can be made, uh, can you, can have many uses. It mm. can be used to make flour, it can be used to make uh, corn syrup, mm. uh, corn oil, popcorn, it can be used to make corn, corn meal and several other things. Yeah, and mm. actually the... The corn oil, it's a very good oil. You should mm -hmm. try it out. If uh, at all you've never tried it out, you should I try it out. I haven't tried it out. You haven't? No, I ah. haven't tried it out. Mm -hmm. What have you tried? Just the flour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've tried the maize flour, but for the corn, no, I haven't tried corn. Someone should oil. tell us more about corn syrup, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell us in the comment section if at all you've ever used the corn syrup. You can tell us in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Are you excited about this topic? Yes, I'm excited because I I, I love popcorn. <laughs> yes. 
So when okay. I hear maize, I imagine popcorn. I just see popcorn and a movie somewhere nice with my popcorn, eating it without even knowing where yeah. it it came from. You know, when you're an African, just like you talked about movies, when you're an African and you're given popcorn when you start watching a movie, even before the movie gets gets halfway, you're done with the popcorn. Yeah, I've tried that thing. You know, when I usually see the people in the movies, they have a lot of popcorn. The white. Them. Yeah. And they are watching it. You see that they are watching the movie until the movie ends and they are still have, having they popcorn. They still have that popcorn. Because they were taking it one by one. Yeah, Africans. so I've tried that. But I find that the movie has not even reached in the middle, like in the climax. But I've finished my popcorn. I'm like, wow. You're an African. Okay. Yeah, you're, I'm you're African. eating it like as if you're eating Ugali. Yeah, I'm eating it as if it is food. So today we have uh, different subtopics. You're going to talk on uh, seed treatment. Mm-hmm. I'm sure most of you didn't know that you should treat your seeds before planting them. Mm-hmm. Uh, soil treatment, we are still going to talk about testing soil, but uh, we'll get there as we continue. Mm-hmm. And also spacing. And uh, definitely, we ha- definitely each and every show, we have to educate you about something. So there's an app that we'll talk about. Ensure yeah. you stay put so that uh, you, you, you get to hear or you get to learn more about the app that yeah. we'll be talking about yeah because so, there is something very exciting about that app mm. we're not going to tell you about it right now we just yeah. want you to tune in and be curious to know mm. what type of this app mm-hmm. is it going to help improve my crops yeah. is it going to help improve my yields mm. so we are going to talk about that app in the next uh in the next few minutes mm. and if you're from a semi-arid area definitely you should not leave this channel we're here yeah. to educate you about growing maize in semi-arid area uh, mm-hmm. i just got to learn that uh maize grown in semi-arid area take like three months yeah. by three months they are good yeah they are taking up to three months you mm-hmm. know they are not affected with the uh, humid condition like for example mm-hmm. uh those areas like uh, limuru mm-hmm. there is a lot of cold there Kitale. so yeah Kitale. Mm-hmm. so it is always like the most of the their plants mm-hmm. their maize plants mm-hmm. take a lot of time to grow in those kind of areas mm-hmm. so yeah so today we are going to focus on semi-arid areas so semi-arid people mm-hmm. be ready to hear what we are going to say and if you're also if you're also keen or uh if if you love maize just like you claim or mm-hmm. you know actually i've ever done a his business. Mm-hmm. I've ever sold maize, by the way. Wow. Not the the mindy choma, the, the dry maize, the ones that oh, you have in sacks. Okay, yes. yes. There was a time I was doing that business. Mm-hmm. There's no business I haven't tried. <laughs> that business, is this making a lot of money? Yeah, it's, making, making, it's, money? Making, it's making, uh, I was making good profits, considering the fact that I come from a, an area where there are no so much maize. So, with the, those, the, the okay. sellers, mm-hmm. they used to bring us maize in lorries mm-hmm. so you just go you just go buy uh maybe two sacks or three sacks mm-hmm. then you will be selling uh, according to teams wow yeah That's so amazing. by the time you are done with the sack definitely you have a good profit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then uh, you'll find that during that time in a, in our market not so many people are selling maize mm-hmm. and not so many people have maize in their homes so mm-hmm. wana kutegemea if you wow. don't have maize, yes, it so was a there good was business. high demand in maize in that yeah. area. It was a good business, actually. Wow. I should you try it again. You could have continued with it. Ah, and make so lots more. of money. I had to go back to school. Oh, of course, you should go back to school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when you talk about maize seed treatment, uh, maize seed treatment, basically, uh, even before I define it for you, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, this colored maize. Colored maize. Yeah, yes. I have seen the yellow maize. No, not even the the yellow, mm-hmm. the ones that are already treated, the pink ones. I've seen the green oh, ones. I'm not oh, sure if before the, planting. Yeah, before oh, planting. Before planting, I've seen the maize. They are always pink in color mm. inside the, that sack before they have been planted. Mm. So some people wonder, what is that pink thing? Mm. What is why why is this maize this pink? pink? Yeah. So we are going to tell you. Why does this maize contain the pink substance? Yeah. And also, when you talk about maize treatment, I don't know if these, these traditional ones work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen farmers from the villages, mm-hmm. they take maize, they put it inside water, they soak it in water for quite some days. Mm-hmm. And then when the maize starts growing, mm-hmm. 
ndio wanapanda like, like they soak it with the soil inside no or? they just soak in water okay yeah and then after soaking it in water definitely the maize will start to germinate mm-hmm. because it's in water mm-hmm. sasa so, zikianza so, kugrow hivyo that's when they are planting it they take it to the far- they take it to their farms and then they plant them i don't know oh. if it's a way of that seed treatment so but yeah it's, it's creative. creative it's a traditional way mm-hmm. anyway uh back to maize seed treatment uh this is a process by which seeds are treated with various chemicals mm-hmm. today we're going to talk about treating maize with chemicals yeah that's where the pink color comes from actually mm-hmm. when you go to an agrovet to get your maize seeds you realize uh i was i was just being informed that uh may, there are different types of maize seeds mm-hmm. definitely that are already treated yeah there's another one called uh, duma i don't mm-hmm. know if you've heard of the duma duma yeah, yeah i've heard of duma you, yeah so there are different types of maize seeds that are treated differently but definitely all of them are just treated with using chemicals mm-hmm. yeah that is uh, basically what maize seed treatment is yeah and also maize mm-hmm. seed treatment it is uh, also an application of biological uh, biological or physical or chemical agents mm-hmm. so you can treat your maize using biological agents you can treat them using uh, chemical or mm-hmm. uh, physical agents depending on the variety of maize you have mm-hmm. and also the type of treatments you are going to instill on your maize yeah and uh, there's definitely a purpose for treating maize mm-hmm. i don't know if you've heard of the purpose for treating maize yes. yeah there are different type there is definitely a purpose for treating maize mm-hmm. like uh, we treat maize to protect the seeds or even the seedlings actually because you can even treat the seedlings yeah and you are protecting against it from diseases. diseases and pests yes yeah that's why our topic is pest and disease, disease control don't 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 start wondering why we are talking about maize so much and mm-hmm. we are not dwelling on the pests and disease we are getting there so yeah. the reason why you treat your maize is to protect it from the pests and the diseases mm-hmm. yeah you know your maize are prone to different kinds of attacks different mm-hmm. kinds of enmity that mm-hmm. is between there between the pests weeds and also between the the chemicals so if you want before you plant your your seeds mm-hmm. you must first treat your your seeds before planting them yeah and also uh The other thing the other primary objective of this seed treatment mm. is uh, enhancing the growth of the crop. Mm. So through these uh, chemicals that you are applying to your seeds, mm-hmm. you ensure that your crops are growing well yeah. without being disturbed by the pests mm-hmm. or other organisms that are present in the soil. Mm. Mm-hmm. And and it also helps uh, the germination rates to be high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at the end of the day by the way you'll get a uh, good crop yields. At wow. the end of the day, and you'll also harvest well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the moment you treat your maize, definitely, if you're a farmer who is growing your maize to take to the market and sell, not for eating, mm-hmm. you'll definitely get a good harvest. Yes. That's why we really encourage seed treatment, mm-hmm. the maize seed treatment. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, we have preventive measures. Mm-hmm. Uh, maize treatment uh, is also a way of uh, preventing pests and diseases from getting into your into your seeds mm-hmm. and they ensure more production of crops just like I, as i was saying uh, the moment you treat your maize mm-hmm. you get a good harvest the moment you get a good harvest you make a lot of money mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and also you know soil treatment is like improving the physical chemical and biological characteristic of of your soil mm-hmm. you know different soils have different characteristics and for you to know the type of characteristic that your soil hold mm-hmm. you must first conduct uh, different uh, tests so that you can identify the type of uh, seeds you have to plant in that particular types of soil yeah so as we continue we will also tell you about soil testing but before that let's first of all jump into the common practices mm-hmm. of soil treatment yes what are the practices that we apply before uh, before treating our soil yeah yeah so first of all let's talk about insecticide insecticide treatment mm-hmm. uh, this is what i mean it's apply it's uh they are applied to seeds insecticide treatment are applied to seeds to protect them from pests mm-hmm. and diseases mm-hmm. such as corn maggots these ones are uh pests mm-hmm. the pests that uh, attack the the maize definitely we have the stock borers we have the 
corn maggots but now when you talk about the seeds not the plant the seeds so we have the corn maggots we have the wireworms actually i go to learn about the wireworms today mm-hmm. what are the, the wireworms they're also I oh the one. wireworms okay. the wireworms okay, okay you say it worms <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> the wireworms. I also go to learn about the wireworms today. They attack the seeds. That you, the moment you don't treat your seeds well, mm-hmm. the wireworms will attract the the will get attracted to the seeds and they will destroy the seeds. That's why we encourage insecticide treatment. You you use the insecticides. Maybe you spray the insecticides on the seeds so that you protect them against the pests and diseases from attacking your seeds. Yes, and uh, apart from the insect side, there there is also pest sides, mm. which are like uh, you use this pest side mm. to protect your crops from weeds, uh, from to protect the weeds and other diseases from interfering with your plant growth. Mm. So everybody wants the, his or her plant to grow well. Mm-hmm. So if you do, if you follow these measures like applying pesticides and uh, applying insecticides this will help your this will enable your plant to grow well without uh, various distractions mm-hmm. and also have seed coating when mm-hmm. you are uh, treating your seeds you use nutrients mm-hmm. the nutrients that are used to mm-hmm. coat the maize seeds yes. so that when you're planting uh, there, are le- there are less chances of uh, pests and diseases attacking your seeds yeah and you know that seeds. seed coating mm-hmm. Uh, you you said about seed coating. Yes, yeah. seed ho- coating also improves the soil in mm. general because it through that that coating contains nutrients. Mm-hmm. So those nutrients, when you you put them inside the soil, mm-hmm. it also supplies those nutrients uh, in the soil. Yeah, and the nutrients are good for the soil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are good for the plants also. So mm-hmm. the plants will be able to consume those nutrients mm-hmm. to produce a good harvest, to produce good fruits. Or yeah. Okay. Yeah, and also we have uh, the another method. It, we were talking about the methods, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, other method is pH adjustments. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, sometimes uh, you, after testing your soil, you realize that your soil is uh, ha- is very acidic or your soil is not very acidic. Your soil is not like, uh, the pH of your soil is not acidic. Like there is the acidity, the more the acid, the more the soil, the more the plants will suffer, and the lower the acids, the lower the the plants will suffer. So when apply when adjusting the the pH, you ensure that the lime you can add the lime to raise the pH of your soil, mm-hmm. or even you can add uh, sulfur to lower the pH of your alkaline soil. So ensure that your soil is average; mm-hmm. it's not very acidic, and it's not it doesn't even lack acidity. Mm-hmm. It ensure that it doesn't lack acidity and also uh, you should ensure that it is not that acidic you should also um, practice the the step of uh, the, the step of measuring your soil over and over again measuring your so, testing, testing the soil, soil. <laughs> yeah over and over okay i don't know if you've heard about pelleting pellets uh, i haven't heard about yeah i have heard about pelleting can you tell us more about pelleting? Okay, pelleting is simply adding a protective layer around the seed to improve, mm-hmm. uh, to improve handling and planting. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, how can I explain it? You you add layers mm-hmm. to your. I think simply adding layers to your maize seeds before planting. Mm-hmm. Actually, when you when you plant your seeds after you've, you've added layers, definitely you're protecting the seeds mm-hmm. from the diseases or even the pets actually let me just talk about diseases because you find so many diseases in the soil that is if you don't test your soil mm-hmm. so this, when when you have layers on your seeds mm-hmm. you are protecting them from diseases yeah and you know a lot of that's just like the way a human being can wear uh, layers and layers of clothes <laughs> like you can wear five sweaters on a cold season uh-huh. you see to that is you from cold. yeah you're <laughs> protecting yourself from cold that is a disease mm. So when you wear those sweaters, there mm-hmm. is no way that uh, every day when you wear those kind of clothes, mm-hmm. warm clothes mm-hmm. that are warm enough to prevent you from such cold, mm-hmm. there's no way you can tell me that you are suffering from pneumonia and you to you wear heavily. Every day you wear warmly. Yeah. So that is that applies like just the way uh, the seed, mm-hmm. the pelleting seed uh, process occurs mm-hmm. by applying these layers of. Uh, 
of is chemicals or yeah, yeah. Or by coating uh, the seed with these chemicals okay. beneficial yeah. chemicals uh, they are able to prevent these diseases and pests from attacking the plants yeah yeah we also have uh, the organic matter addition mm. yeah you know the organic matter right yeah definitely the decomposition mm-hmm. the the decomposed materials mm-hmm. like uh the waste materials from animals mm-hmm. the dead leaves yes. <laughs> they call them dead leaves yeah yeah the dead leaves those mm-hmm. are the organic matter yeah mm-hmm. so the organic matter when decomposed mm-hmm. uh they form pro- like they are they are organis- organisms mm-hmm. that are in that uh organic matter mm-hmm. which influences the uh, the decomposition process mm-hmm. so when the decomposition uh process occurs mm-hmm. it provides beneficial uh beneficial matter to the plants mm-hmm. so when you apply your organic matter in your soil before planting it raises the the soil fertility so mm-hmm. your soil your soil becomes fertile and more good for your for your planting uh, planting actually when you talk about organic matter what we basically mean is manure mm-hmm. if at all you don't understand what organic matter is definitely we mean manure yeah. and the manures really make the soil to be fertile by mm-hmm. the way Uh, not the use of fertilizers, just manure, mm-hmm. the organic matter. I I tend to feel that manure or the organic matter are much better than fertilizers. What do you think? Organic manure and and fertilizers. There's a difference. Yeah, the, the fertilizers they, they, they are manufactured. Mm-hmm. The, While the organic matter is organic. Yeah. yeah, they are far much better. I will encourage people to use organic uh, organic fertilizers mm-hmm. than the the chemical fertilizers. Mm. You know because the chemical fertilizers they have the ad- advantages and disadvantages. Mm. And also I, I don't think there are any if there are, there are mm-hmm. any disadvantages of organic fertilizer maybe they are out there but I always know about the advantages. So sometimes you have to focus on the positivity than the negativity. So when you use the, the No, sometimes you have to focus on both sides. I've realized <laughs> just that after saying this statement. You know, when I say when you find me saying that focus on the advantages only, mm-hmm. you will you will be very lazy. Yeah, actually you will just very focus lazy. on one side. Yeah, and that will cost you a big deal because when you focus using the chemical fertilizers every time and apply them to your farm. Of course, you'll you'll focus on the advantages, but the disadvantages mm. will cost you a big deal. You Actually, see? I think the disadvantage <laughs> the only disadvantage I, I feel is in the organic matter part mm. <laughs> is big dirty being dirty <laughs> and smelly and smelly. <laughs> okay, yeah, it can be smelly, but at least it is uh, it is a uh, it is good for your plants it is uh, environmental friendly yeah it is not polluting environment like the chemical ah, it is polluting but oh no it's not polluting it's polluting the air yeah it is polluting the, the air that comes out yeah. from those manures uh uh-uh. uh yeah let's say that is one of the advantages the of disadvantage of uh, <laughs> organic uh, fertilizers mm. yeah but organic fertilizers are eco friendly than compared to chemical fertilizers let me see put it in that way mm-hmm. because when i put it in that way at least someone can understand what i mean by that mm-hmm. because i can say that they are good econ- they are environmental friendly, friendly but you are telling me right now yeah they, they are full polluting the environment yeah their smell also is very irritating so i can say that um organic fertilizer are far much better yeah but if you want good yields just use the organic don't listen to me just use the organic fertilizers yeah. they are good just be ready to consume the smell yeah and they, are, they are good yeah and they are improving the soil fertility also yeah. okay uh ayan was talking about soil treatment so i want us to dive into that soil treatment deeply so that you get to learn more about soil treatment when it comes to maize planting first of all soil cre- treatment definitely creates a favorable environment for maize for maize plants to thrive and it also minimizes the risk of pests and diseases the moment you're treating your soil mm-hmm. definitely uh, you're preventing the pests and diseases from getting into your soil which mm-hmm. is a very, a very very good thing mm-hmm. so we should always focus on treating our soil mm-hmm. especially uh, when you want to plant maize mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, I know maize is prone to different types of uh, attacks and mm-hmm. diseases from pests. Mm-hmm. And for you to do that, you should also ensure that you practice this soil treatment. Mm-hmm. You treat your soil first and mm-hmm. then you plant your maize. Yeah. Yeah, and we have also fertilizer applications. I was just talking about the organic fertilizers mm-hmm. and uh, chemical fertilizers. Mm-hmm. So, when you're applying the fertilizers, first of all, I encourage you to apply the organic fertilizers mm-hmm. because they are good for your plants. Mm-hmm. They don't contain any dangerous uh, chemicals that may affect your plants. Mm-hmm. You know, when you raise your plants using the... When you, you continue taking care of your plants using the organic fertilizers, mm-hmm. your plants will be able to grow well and also it will be healthy for people because they don't contain any type of chemical mm-hmm. that... Um, that have affected that plant. Mm-hmm. So when you use this organic fertilizer, ensure that uh, while choosing these types of fertilizers for your crops, ensure that uh, you look for the nutrient contents in that type of fertilizer. So through this, you can be able to identify uh, uh, the amount of nutrients that your soil needs. If your soil needs this amount of nutrients, mm-hmm. then you take the nutrients and apply them to your soil. But sometimes you find that your soil has enough nutrients. Mm. So you don't have to go and buy another fertilizer that has so much nutrients. Yeah. So that will make your plants like it will... Or like, even you know, you'll end up messing your soil. Yes. Yeah. Because we, we always say that too much of something is it's poisonous. dangerous, yes. Yeah. <laughs> too much of something is, po- is poisonous or dangerous, mm. you see. Mm. So sometimes you have to focus on what is really going on with that plant of yours. Don't just concentrate on growing it for commercial purposes or for your own good. Just focus on the health benefits of that plant Mm -hmm. because it will also help you uh, live a healthy life Mm -hmm. and help your customers live a healthy life. And also, when you focus on the soil, Mm -hmm. when you focus on the soil treatment, definitely it will be of benefit to you because... Maybe we, when you're practicing crop rotation, just like we were talking about yesterday, mm-hmm. it's easier to know that ah, this type of plant can survive in this type of soil. Now that I've treated this soil, mm-hmm. I can have maize, I can have it. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just giving an example. Mm-hmm. I can have maize here. Then next time I have beans. That is if your soil is well treated. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mm, with the with maybe manure or, or the organic matter, like she was saying, or even fertilizers, but uh, we encourage organic matter because uh, it does not have chemicals. Yes. Yeah. As much as it's polluting the environment, yeah. <laughs> it does not have chemicals. Yeah, organic additions, organic matter addition is very crucial. Mm. It's a crucial step towards uh, soil treatment mm. uh, practices. Mm. Because it is very important. I must be saying it just like that right now, but it is very important. Just try it. You will see the results are very good. Yeah. Ensure uh, you always test your soil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there are different, oh, definitely we have different practices of testing soil when it comes to planting maize. Before you plant maize, there are different practices that uh, we use to test our soil, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, to treat our soil. So really, first of all is soil testing. I think we'll be repeating this each and every day when we talk about soil. <laughs> yes, yes, you should test your soil. Why should you plant your, something on your soil, yet you don't know the acidity or the alkalinity mm. of that soil? Actually, testing soil is very important. As a farmer, uh, it helps you make informed decisions. Mm-hmm. Before you take your manure or your organic matter to that farm, you already know what type of soil you have. Mm-hmm. Before you apply fertilizers on that soil, you already know what type of soil you have. Mm-hmm. So soil testing is very, very important that's why we also we always advocate for soil testing each and every day when we are in the show yeah. and we are talking about soil yeah. we have to continue telling you ensure you test your soil i believe testing soil is not expensive if at all they charge for it it's not expensive each and every farmer can afford it yeah yeah and there is also i, I can recommend one of the cheapest way of uh, of of controlling these of treating your soil treating that or is, testing of treating, see, we were talking, oh, soil, we are talking don't about... Say, don't, don't recommend a yes. traditional one. <laughs> no, it's not a traditional one. It's uh-huh. something that a lot of farmers outside there are practicing. Uh-huh. It is soil solarization. Uh-huh. This is whereby, uh, this is one of the best methods, one of the best methods, mm-hmm. that is 
according to how I believe, mm -hmm. of treating your soil is also cheap. It's not that uh, hard. Mm -hmm. This is whereby you take the you apply clear uh, plastic straps mm -hmm. all over your soil. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you apply that those straps, yeah, it is it is a lot of labor, but at least it it is you gain something out of it. Through applying these plastic tabs on the soil, mm -hmm. you'll be able to get rid of the weeds, get rid of the pests, get rid of other harmful organisms that may affect your plants. Mm -hmm. So through this, that uh, those papers, they, they form that hot environment, the, hum the humid uh, stuff. You know how you, you, can, you can imagine yourself inside a paper bag. Mm -hmm. You suffocate, you sweat. right? Yeah, you sweat and suffocate, <laughs> yes. right? That is what that that is the use of soil solarization. Mm. This is whereby those plants they are being suffocated, the insects on the soil. They so, don't have that uh in a, like they don't have that air. You know, for something to live you must breathe uh well. Mm. It's not the the nini. The soil become not the it's not well ventilated. Mm -hmm. So all the organisms that are under those uh those plastic tabs mm -hmm. are being uh, succumbed, so they they end up dying. So the uh this you can only do this when you when you've not planted yet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, before you that is a uh, one type of soil treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so soil solarization. So through that putting that uh clear tab tab mm -hmm. clear the tabs mm -hmm. uh, on the nini on your farm. Mm -hmm. They suffocate these organisms. So these organisms can also be beneficial to your soil mm -hmm. since uh, when they die, they decompose, mm -hmm. they rot, and then it becomes nutrients to the soil. Hmm. Yes. That's a new one. Yeah. I hope my viewers are getting it. I'm, I'm also surprised. I think it's not new right now. <gasps> I, I don't know if it's new, but mm -hmm. it might be new to our, some of our, follow, our followers or viewers. It might be very new to them, but at least you have learned something today. You are going. Maybe you can try practicing that and see how it works. Do you know where I've seen such a thing, but not exactly what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I've only seen it once. I was watching uh, some Chinese planting rice, mm -hmm. rice, and uh, they were having those big polythene papers, mm -hmm. the colorless ones, actually. Mm -hmm. And then they were having some sticks, the sticks that could bend. Mm -hmm. After preparing the, the soil, after preparing their farms where they wanted to plant rice, mm -hmm. they uh, ensured that they poured a lot of water on the soil. That I think that was a way of irrigating that area. Mm -hmm. And then they, they poured the, the rice seeds on the, on the irrigated part, on okay. the muddy part. Mm -hmm. And then they took the sticks. They, they took the sticks and then... Uh, how are they doing it? They were putting the sticks on the sides of, of the farms mm -hmm. and then covering them with the polythene polythene paper. Mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know how that was helping the rice the rice to grow, mm -hmm. but I think that is how they do it in China. Actually that was the only, that's the only place I've seen that kind of a practice. I've so started picturing that in my <laughs> 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 So I'm getting to learn about that one today. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it looks like a good practice that can really help. Yeah, I think it's a good practice, but I don't know what about. I don't know anything about it mm -hmm. since you have told me just right now. Oh, about the the rice. No, yeah. I'm talking about what you were telling us initially about uh, oh, putting yeah. the polythene papers on the on your shamba, mm -hmm. and then uh, no, no, the, not really the polythene papers. Uh, the clear taps. Yes, clear plastic taps. Mm -hmm. Oh, Taps okay. with a T A R P S. Ah, yeah. They are new. they are like they are just you can say nylons. They can they are like that because they are doing the same thing, but it, they must be clear. They can be clear. Okay. Yeah. That's new. Let's talk about soil fertilization. Uh, soil fertilization definitely. Uh, when you want to when you want to use fertilizers on your farm. You have to base it on the fa on the results of on the results of your soil testing. After seeing the results, after testing your soil, and you already have the results of soil testing, that's when you know which fertilizers to use on your farm. You don't just go to the agrovet and buy any type of fertilizer and use it on your farm. Mm -hmm. That way, you not get the the yields that you want. Yeah. First, after testing your soil, uh, you'll be advised. 
at the agrovet i believe that uh, they are professionals you can be advised after getting the results of soil testing you can be advised on which type of fertilizers you use on your farm before you plant the maize mm-hmm. yeah i think that is a good practice because uh, the moment you have an advisor who can advise you on which fertilizer to use on your farm after testing your soil, it's easier to know what type of plant you can have on your farm. Mm -hmm. And since today we are talking about maize, you should focus on uh, the fertilizers that uh, maize go well with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, sometimes people assume that the same information that was given to somebody else mm. is the same information that will be given to you. Or you so, can copy. Yeah, or you can copy. <laughs> so mm. most of the farmers are, are going wrong in this because uh, you go to your neighbor and ask him or her, what type of medication did you apply to your farm? And that particular person will tell you this type of medication. And then the person will have to tell you all the instruction he was given by the the agrovet. Mm-hmm. In the agrovet. Mm-hmm. So when he tells you, he or she, he, let's, let's use he. Mm-hmm. When he tells you that this, I was given this kind of medicine, it's good for my farm. I will, and uh, I was given this kind of instructions. Don't go and borrow and then go apply to your farm. Go, go yourself to the agrovet. Yes, you have seen the recommendation are good. You see, uh, you have witnessed the your neighbor is your neighbor's crops are healthy. They are good. So don't just assume. Go to the agrovet yourself, and then uh, go to the agrovet and then ask yourself. I need this kind of uh, medicine, this kind of uh, At this point, I chemicals. see that Ayan, Ayan is treating farms as if they are human beings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's just talking about medication, medicine. <laughs> yes, and you know, for you to become a farmer, you you must be, like, you must act like one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and you have to be conversant with the types of fertilizers. If you're not so conversant with them, you have to ask uh yeah, the, the one agrovet. yeah the person the one in charge of the agrovet. Mm-hmm. yeah so when and they when, sure that person is a professional yeah because uh, you can't just get there and ask anybody definitely you'll get a wrong advice yeah mm-hmm. after going to that agrovet to that person who, who told your neighbor about the the chemical uh, or the fertilizer mm-hmm. and ask him and then because he might be te- he might tell you a different formation for from what he told the other person because the farms are always not the same mm-hmm. you maybe maybe there is a single mistake in your soil uh, that the other farmer didn't have so make sure you t- you test your soil ph and then take all your documentation mm-hmm. tell the agrovet everything about your farm through that you'll be able to the the agro the person in the agrovet or the person who is giving you those kind of fertilizers mm-hmm. the ex- the expert will be able to tell you, uh, yes, this is the kind of uh, fertilizer I recommend. This is how you should use it to apply to your farm. This is how you should continue like applying. Mm-hmm. So make sure that uh, you are going to the right person to ask for that kind of information. Yeah. At the moment, you've already applied your fertilizers. If at all it's allowed, if at all you're allowed to apply your fertilizers, maybe you can even use manure because... Uh, the organic matter, the manure, they are, also, they are so good with nutrients. They will add so much nutrients to your farm, just like you were saying before. Mm-hmm. So use of organic matter is also encouraged. But if at all your farm needs fertilizers, ensure after testing your soil, you know which type of fertilizers to use on your farm. Yeah, and that, takes me, me eh, mm-hmm. and that takes me back to my village. Mm-hmm. Uh, I must tell you this story. Mm-hmm. So in our village, when someone gets sick, mm-hmm. maybe I had an headache, a uh, uh, chest pain. Mm-hmm. And my neighbor's daughter had the same thing maybe a few weeks ago. That is something that is going on, I won't lie. It's mm-hmm. something that has been going on for Not only in your generation. Your village, <laughs> yeah. generation. Mm-hmm. So if I had the chest pain mm-hmm. and I am unable to go to the hospital, I can't afford this medicine. I just go to my neighbor and tell him, and tell him, oh, you had this kind of medicine. You know, your daughter used to be sick in this ty- with this type of... Uh, this type of sickness. Mm-hmm. My daughter is also coughing just like your daughter was <laughs> coughing. And then the neighbor will be like, uh, oh, did she uh, remove any cough or what? As if the neighbor is the doctor. So the neighbor will take the medicine and give it to the, lend it to the neighbor. Mm-hmm. 
So the neighbor will give the child. So that is how uh, people are, are being treated in that village. The medicine is circulating around the village. When a child gets better, they take that medicine to another <laughs> child who is also sick with the same sickness. Or, or they also believe that if you are like, if you have an headache, mm. they, uh, if you have an headache, it is always maramoja. No other like, <laughs> like no other thing they want. They only want maramoja. Don't you just don't rush behave, Don't <laughs> behave like people from my aunt's village. Yeah, like <laughs> I was. When you're a farmer, just do it your own way. Yeah, yes. in fact, I adapted. Mm-hmm. I adapted like being like that until I came to Nairobi. <laughs> So I was like, uh, one of my friends in the in the hostel, I was in school, and then one of the friends was sick. And then uh, when she finished her medication, there are other medication, medicines that were there. Mm-hmm. And I had the same... In symptoms. Fact, yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, we had the same symptoms. So I remember this girl had the same symptoms. And I was going to borrow her the medicine. <laughs> and she was like, why are you borrowing my medicine? Just go to the nurse. She will give you the medicine. And I was mm-hmm. like, no, I have the same symptoms as you. So just give me this medicine. And she told me, no, I can't give you the medicine because it was not prescribed mm-hmm. to be given to you. Yeah. And I was okay. Then I went to the nurse. And you know, the funny thing is, mm-hmm. the nurse found out that I have a totally different disease than her. Mm-hmm. You see now, that is the disadvantages of not going to the specialist. Yeah. Always go to an expert. Go to someone who understands these kinds of things in terms of the the how you treat your plant, in terms of the type of fertilizers you put on your farm. So make sure you ask the expert. <laughs> <laughs> just go just don't go and knock at your neighbor's door at the end. Fertilizer in Guinea, just mm-hmm. give it to me and go use it. There's a small portion that has remained. Actually, I've seen that a lot. Mm-hmm. When you're when you are in the farm and uh, you're planting your seeds or even your main seeds, mm-hmm. and then upate tu kuna space too, like there are like three, four lines that are remaining, mm-hmm. and you don't have fertilizer. You just go and knock at your neighbor's door and tell and tell him or her that ah eh, last week Miliana umepanda kama fertilizer yako ilibaki please help me with the fertilizer I use it it's mm-hmm. not encouraged I know most of the farmers do that especially these farmers who don't uh, farm for selling yes unless it is the same exact fertilizer you always use no to, no don't yeah, don't like that. Yeah. Don't advise people to use the same exact. When you when you go to an um, agrovet to get uh-huh. your fertilizer, definitely uh-huh. they have to ask you. You're going to use it on how many acres of land? Like I'm they saying, give you the exact. Uh-huh. You go borrow from. What I'm saying is that sometimes, like in an area, they supply this kind of fertilizers to everybody. Oh, so they the give the same thing. Yeah, they give the same fertilizer to. People, mm-hmm. so it's not only that every person has the same hectares of land. Mm. Another person has a lot of like many hectares of land, mm. and you only have maybe one acre, and that person has eight hectares of land, mm. and you are given the same fertilizer. So you can't apply all the fertilizer in that small piece of land. Of course, there is always another one that is remaining, and they are the same fertilizer given by the government. So you can, unless unless it is a situation like that. But me, don't. But recently, uh, I I saw the government launching uh launching uh some uh some stuff of uh, how to get fertilizers from them, mm-hmm. the free fertilizers. Mm-hmm. Okay, actually, it's not free because you're paying. I was think them paying some mm-hmm. little amount of money. Uh, you get you you first of all you mentioned the the you, how many acres of land you have, mm-hmm. and then. They're the ones who will tell you uh, how much fertilizer you can use on that particular land. Mm-hmm. And then when you come to buy, they don't give you excess. They give you the exact amount of fertilizer mm-hmm. that you can use on your land. But anyway, wow. okay. we'll talk about more yeah, after the break. First of all, let's take a short commercial break. We'll be back with more. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us on social media handles mm-hmm. at YouTube, at a Farmers Media at uh, Facebook, at Farmers Media, in Twitter, at Farmers Media, in our website at www.aformersmedia. We'll take a short break. We'll be back. Maze the 
does not grow well in acidic soils. Depending on your soil test, you may need to add lime two months before planting. Now you need to select the best maize variety for your area. For dry areas, buy a variety that can grow with little water. Always use certified seed. This is disease free and guaranteed to germinate. Consider planting other more drought resistant crops like sorghum and millet in areas that are very dry. When preparing your land, it's a good idea to practice minimum tillage, which means you only dig holes or rip lines where you will plant the seed. Mark planting lines 90 centimeters apart from row to row and dig planting holes 30 centimeters apart from each other. The holes should be 15 centimeters deep. Put two handfuls of well-rotted manure in each hole and add one teaspoon of the recommended fertilizer. Mix well, then place one certified seed in each hole. Plant beans between your maize rows. Beans add nitrogen in your soil. You've planted maize and put in a lot of work to keep your soil healthy. Now, you need to manage it well so you get a good crop. Keep weeding as weeds take up food, water, space and light meant for your crop. Fertilizing your maize can really boost your yields. And the best way to know what fertilizer you need is by doing a soil test. Add fertilizer to your maize when you plant. Again, when your crop is knee high, top dress your maize with nitrogen rich fertilizers such as CAN or urea. For very high yields, it's worth top dressing again when the maize starts to flower or tussle. Investing in the right fertilizer and improving your soil health means investing in your profits. With the changing climate, we will see more pests and diseases and as smart farmers know, when it comes to pests and diseases, prevention is better than cure. Some of the most common pests in maize are fall armyworm, stem borer and striga weed. Do the following to reduce pests and diseases in your maize. Plant certified seeds. Keep your farm weed free. Protect your crop every season and scout for pests and diseases regularly and treat them as you see them. Common maize diseases are head smart, maize lethal necrosis disease, MLND, and leaf streak. All three are caused by viruses and have no chemical treatment. Signs of maize lethal necrotic disease or MLND include drying of leaves, rapid yellowing of leaves, no tasseling, unusual or no ears, and rotting cobs. If you notice an attack, uproot the affected plant and burn them away from the field. Thank you so much for having us. We are still back. This is the Farmers Media where we connect, learn, and grow. And this is Mid Morning Show. Continue following us. We are live on YouTube at a Farmers Media, on Facebook at a Farmers Media, on Twitter at a Farmers with the Z underscore Media. Our website is www.afarmersmedia.com. My name is Mary Oswero. And my name is Regina Ayanai. Yeah, before we went for our break, we were talking about soil treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you talk about soil treatment, definitely you ha we have to mention weeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how to control weeds when you want to plant your maize. Yes, maize. Yeah. And maybe even after you've planted your maize, when your maize are starting to grow, there are so many weeds that you'll find on your farm. And there are different ways that you can use to control the weeds. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, you can uh, uproot them. Like, when the weeds are, are in the farm, 
they're so stubborn to the plants. Definitely they want to have the same nutrients mm-hmm. that your plants are having. Yeah, there is competition. Yeah, competition. Them. They need light. They also need nutrients and they also need water. So the moment you're just watering your, your plants and you're not removing the weeds, you're also watering the weeds. They will grow. They will end up uh, overpowering your plants. Yeah. And your plants will not grow well. At the end of the day, you'll not, you'll not get good yields. That's why we encourage uh, such processes of weed control. First of all, you can use herbicides. Mm-hmm. You can use herbicides to control your weeds. It's not so much encouraged, but uh, it's one way of controlling your weeds. The moment you spray herbicides on the weeds, definitely the weeds will die and your plants will remain to be strong. Another one is hand weeding. Uh, we discourage weeding using the germ beds because at the end of the day you might interfere with the roots of your plants, of your maize plants. So hand weeding is better because you you'll be so careful when you're hand weeding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, weeding is also one of the practices of soil treatment. Mm-hmm. So when you remove before you also you start digging your farm or doing anything mm-hmm. or even planting, the first crucial step is. Uh, hand picking you can hand pick them if they are not many mm-hmm. is removing those weeds from your field when you dig them dig out the weeds and also make sure that you take them out before planting your seeds mm-hmm. so that even if the other weeds grow they won't be as many as the ones you had already removed so there will be a few weeds so through that you'll be able to protect your plants mm-hmm. from um, being um, being damaged by these weeds mm-hmm. So through the, removing these weeds, uh, your plant won't have any more competition for water or any nutrients. Other yes. Yeah, and when you remove the weeds, uh, you also encourage you also encourage germination mm-hmm. for your plants. Mm-hmm. Uh, good germination because the moment your weeds need water and the moment your plants need water and the weeds are also there, you're not helping your plants. Mm-hmm. So. Just remove the weeds. Yeah. Yeah. And before we went for a break, we were talking about seed treatment. And soil just, treatment. So, yeah, soil treatment. And also we had talked about uh, seed treatment. Mm-hmm. Just realized that there's so much there's so much information that you have for us that yes. you didn't exhaust. Oh, okay. I think about I cut that. you short. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so uh, in uh, we were talking about the seed treatment and also types of seed treatments mm. so one of the other thing of seed treatment mm-hmm. is a fun use of fungicides mm-hmm. you know many companies pre-treat, pre-treat their corn seeds with fungi- fungicides mm-hmm. to help protect the seeds from soil borne fungal pathogens mm-hmm. such as those that those that cause seed ro- rods seedling uh, br- blights and uh root rods. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the use of these fungicides, they help prevent all these types of uh, disadvantages. Mm-hmm. So, when you the, when you insert the fungicides in your seeds, mm-hmm. these fungicides on your seeds, they prevent the, the, the formation of blights in mm-hmm. your seeds mm-hmm. and also they prevent the roots from rotting. You know, a lot of roots rot for no reason. Mm-hmm. Just find that you are, the roots of your plants are rotted. And also there is this uh, use of biologicals. Mm-hmm. So, but, Actually, before you get to the use of biologicals, mm-hmm. uh, rotting of the roots. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the pests and diseases attack the roots. Mm-hmm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, for example... Mm-hmm. Uh, when before you buy things from any company, mm-hmm. like seeds from any company, mm-hmm. there are different types of companies out there, of mm-hmm. course, uh, that uh, provide seeds. Mm-hmm. So one of the companies may decide that let me pre treat my seeds mm-hmm. before distributing them or before selling them. Mm-hmm. So they take they treat them with these fungicides. Mm-hmm. Through treating these uh, seeds with fungicides, that's why you find uh, colored seeds. Seeds mm. are colored. Different mm. various of seeds are colored in different colors. So should, uh-huh. they 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 put these fungicides on these seeds. Mm. So when they put them, these fungicides, uh, these fungicides help uh protect the the seeds from soil borne diseases. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know if you've seen these colorful maids. Leave alone the treated ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find that a maize cob has uh yellow seed, mm-hmm. purple, the colorful. I'm interested in knowing how <laughs> how you can grow that type of uh, seed in order for it to come out 
in the colorful colorful seeds on the maize why, why would you want a colorful maize plant? It looks beautiful. <laughs> you can cook and eat color. Pink, yeah. yellow, brown, purple. Imagine, can you just imagine having your maize gob and it's having so, so many seeds that have different colors. Leave alone the yellow one. I've, uh, I've seen the yellow maize. But now these color, colorful seeds on the maize gob Mm-hmm. It looks pretty. I'm interested. I, I can be interested <laughs> in knowing. <laughs> it just, you just like you just love it because it is pretty. Yes, it's but pretty. How can you eat something colored? It is like you are eating balloons or what? <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty. And then uh, I've also never known if you mm-hmm. use that type of maize to <laughs> to make maize maize flour. Mm-hmm. Do, do the maize flour come out white or colorful? <laughs> I don't I think it will come white as the others because normally mm-hmm. the normal color of the seeds of the maize plants mm-hmm. are white. Mm. So if if you are also take yellow them, yellow maize seeds, yeah. okay, but the normal color is, uh, white. is white. Uh-huh. The color that is popularly known by many, mm. you know, everybody across the world mm-hmm. knows that. Uh, even a, a little child can know that maize is uh, white. Is white in color. Mm-hmm. When you take a, a yellow maize and a white maize and give it to a child who is used to seeing white maize and ask him, which is which one of these is corn? <laughs> she will just say this one, the white one, because he's not familiar with the yellow color. Yeah. So I don't. For me, honestly, I won't eat a colorful maize Why? because <laughs> for me, I'll just imagine a lot of stuff. You know, I'm a person who is. Uh, so imaginative, like I try to create pictures in You're everything. You're an overthinker. Yeah, an overthinker. <laughs> you can find me in Australia. Yes, I'm in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> but the colorful maize, if you're a farmer and you've ever had that type of maize in your farm, please tell us in the comment section. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you when you turn that maize flour into when you turn that maize into flour, into mm-hmm. maize flour, which color does it have? Yeah, and also is tell us colorful. Yeah, is it colorful? And also tell us uh how do we grow this type of maize? Is it is it grown intentionally or does it just come up like that? Because this morning uh, I uh, I got to learn that uh, when uh, when you're a farmer and you have white maize in your farm mm-hmm. and then the next farm has yellow maize mm-hmm. and uh, there's pollination mm-hmm. that process of pollination or mm-hmm. even uh, insects like bees mm-hmm. definitely the insects like bees really uh, promote does it do I say they promote or they encourage or do what to pollination. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, they they prom- they encourage. Uh, they promote. <laughs> they promote germination yeah. or pollination. No pollination. Okay. Because they they can pick uh some pollen grains from one flower and take them to okay. another flower. Yeah, that so, is called cross pollination. Cross pollination, yes. Mm-hmm. So when you ha- when you're a farmer and you planted white maize and your neighbor's farm has yellow maize, mm-hmm. I just got to learn that when a bee or uh, maybe there's wind and pollen grains from your farm move to the next farm's pollen grain you'll have the yellow, yellow maize. type of maize. Yeah, so, the, unwanted, the maize you didn't want. To. Yeah, you just find yourself having the yellow type of maize. Mm-hmm. So, I'm also interested in knowing, this colorful maize, <laughs> have you ever seen the purple ones? The purple maize? No, I the have. only maize that I've seen is a yellow maize. Because uh, there was really food that was brought in our area a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember. Mm-hmm. We used to call it in our language, Kadika. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kadika. Kadika. That, is, that is your Kadika, French yeah. language. Yeah, it's our Trukana language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we used to call those maids uh, Kadika. Mm. They are yellow. So they brought it, and I was like, "Does this kind of maize exist?" Like we were. I've ever tested it's, it's, it. Yeah, I've is eaten it, it. No, like the 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 flour from the maize. Yeah, it, it is yellow flour. Is it sweet? Yeah, it is sweet. Oh, I don't find it and you sweet. Know, I don't know why. It, it is sweet, but the maize itself, for me, according to me, it's, the maize is not sweet. The white one is better than the yellow one, according to me. But the flour, the flour is good. First, oh. if you cook ugali with it, you will love it. <laughs> I don't think I love the yellow the yeah. yellow ugali. So when they brought those kind of maize, uh, the yellow maize, uh, people at first were not used to seeing that kind of maize, but they adapted it. And then it went and disappeared. You've mm-hmm. never seen that for like years right hmm. now. Those maize, that kind of maize is not found in our area right now. I should bring you one. Do you have them? Yeah. Okay. I should, I should bring you one. It's sweet. I don't know why you're saying you didn't like the maize. I didn't the like the, one. Yellow, the yellow ones. 
yeah the boiled one yeah, yeah i don't like the boiled one i don't know if i've never seen the yellow ones on the cobs the maize oh, cobs i've okay. seen them like they have already been removed the seeds from the now. cobs yeah the seeds oh. that's what i'm talking you about you should try you should try the boiled yellow one and yeah, uh, sweet okay mm. are they sweet really yeah okay. they are absolutely I'll, i'll bring you one maybe i should try anyway the yellow the the maize you are saying it is colorful yeah it has purple I'm sure some of I've you have seen, seen it. it. Yes, I've seen it, but I've never like I've seen it in one of the when I was uh, I was winnowing the maize. Mm. So, no, now I'm talking about a maize cob oh, that has different I types of seen, colors. You I haven't know? seen that. Tiara, please. I'm intre- I'm just interested in knowing mm-hmm. if the flower, mm-hmm. if do they come out colorful or it's white. I'm interested in knowing about that. Anyway, mm-hmm. let's move to the next one. You're talking about the biological, the the treatment, the type, the treatment of types of seed treatments. Uh-huh. So another type is use of biologicals. Mm-hmm. So the use of biological seed treatments are uh, are very beneficial to plant mm-hmm. in various ways. Mm-hmm. One of the ways is it, it provides it it makes the plant take the nutrients. Mm. So the plants are able to take the nutrients and uh, supply them to the rest of the parts of the plant. So through these, your plants will be able to grow more healthy. Mm-hmm. And also they uh, they contain, they provide through these biological, mm-hmm. it contains beneficial uh, bacteria mm-hmm. or fungi. So they just like the way I said about the bacteria, mm-hmm. uh, the bacteria, they, they decompose in the soil, hence providing the nutrients to the plant. Mm-hmm. So... It is the biological are also very benef- they are very beneficial. Could the biological way be the one that I was talking about initially that I was calling the traditional one of soaking? I don't know if if it's true, but you can tell us in the comment section the soaking of your main seeds in water. I don't think so <laughs> because biological informs in involves organisms. When but you hear biology, biology is the study of animals and, and organisms, I think. And plants. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, so it involves organisms. May it be plants, may it be what? But it involves uh types of insects. Uh, not insects. Organisms such as bacteria and fungi. So these I, fungi, uh-huh. uh, they supply the nutrients. I said they decompose and then supply nutrients to the plant. Mm-hmm. And then they tolerate stress. Mm-hmm. So it helps the plant tolerate stress through this biological. So any stress that may be fine, the plant, you know, the also, plants also get stress. You know that. Mm-hmm. You see that this plant is not just healthy. It is boring in a certain way. Yeah. You can see the other plants are very lively. Even if the wind blows, they are not doing anything. But other plants, dina yumba yumba. Especially too. when you cut part, uh, part of the plant. And definitely not a human being is cutting it. Uh, best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that. also the use of biological also helps the plants be resistant to diseases and pests. You see? Mm-hmm. So the plants grows healthy it has these nutrients it is able to support its stem well mm. so when it, it for example the maize mm-hmm. the maize when it gets this biological uh treatment mm-hmm. if you planted your maize plant using these biological seeds mm-hmm. that have been treated uh your maize will grow up healthy it have that uh, branch that thick branch you know the foundation of maize is very crucial especially when you start planting maize when they are they, when they are very young so the the effort you put on that young maize determines uh the growth of that maize mm-hmm. and also the the productivity of that maize mm-hmm. so if you take care of your plants very well your maize plants very well by providing enough nutrients by growing them in a very fertile soil environment by ensuring that you've tested the alkalinity or the acidity of your soil, then there is a guarantee, like a hundred percent guarantee, not even ninety-nine, a hundred percent guarantee. If you have followed all these steps of controlling pests and also ensuring that you've grown your your seeds, your 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 seeds are very well, mm-hmm. your plants will basically grow well. So when you put all these efforts in these young maize plants, they tend to grow healthy. And also ensure that your maize get enough sunlight. Maize do well uh, with enough sunlight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, the maize uh, is uh, when when growing when they are very young they need a lot of support 
because for your maize to grow well, you have to concentrate hard on it. Because uh, if it gets enough int- nutrients, the the trunk, the the small, the here, I don't know it's called what the trunk, the root of the maize, mm-hmm. it is very thick, so that the winds cannot blow it away very easily because it is strong. So the more the strong, the stronger the stem of the maize, the the beautiful the harvest will be. Because when it, then when the maize grows tall and even taller, it produces a uh, even more maize maize combs. So the maize combs become very large. They become large and also produces more. You can find one maize plant has three combs yeah. or two. Mm. We also say that it has triplets or twins. <laughs> you see, so Drew, if you take care of your plant, you might be able to get that kind of harvest of finding your maize having triplets or twins. So, because the branch itself is very strong and it is supporting the maize well, the winds can't do anything. They can't blow it away mm-hmm. because it's very healthy. So, yeah, that is the biological uh, treatment you should apply to your plants. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting to learn a lot. <laughs> yeah, not... I-, I want you to learn a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> As we talk, uh-huh. you're able to learn and I'm also able to learn because yeah. I've learned a lot already from you. <laughs> And uh, some things I didn't know yeah. actually when I came here. But right now, I know it. And next time when someone asks me, I'll be the expert now. I want you to go and research about that beautiful base. Yeah, and you always <laughs> saw that. So that you also teach me about the beautiful base that I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, so every day is a learning day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should. Every day is a learning day for everybody. So another one is physical treatment. Physical treatment. Everybody knows that. This is like, you, you can use physical treatment, uh, you can treat it uh, physically. Not like, uh, you can go around your farm mm. looking for any plants that are affected. And then uh, you will notice, of course, when you go to your plant, to your farm, uh, we were talking about the technology of use of drones. Mm. You can take the drones and look at your plants, which plant is affected. Mm. And then you go and treat it personally, physically. So through this... Um, Physical treating, uh, some seeds can be treated using processes uh, such as uh, priming, pellet, pelleting. You are talking about pelleting, Yes, right? I was talking about pelleting. Uh-huh. You are telling us about pelleting. So that is one of the way you, you covering Covering your seeds with, a, with a layers. Yeah, with mm. layers. Coating your of seeds chemicals. With Yeah. Mm. And then there is this print, film coating. That is just like uh, pelleting. And then there is... Uh, there is uh, priming. Priming is a is a hydration process. This is where it allows your seeds uh, to go through the initial stage of germination, mm-hmm. but then you dry them before the actual germination occurs. So when you just uh, plant your seed and then wait for it to germinate uh, before the the actual before the stage of germ- the initial stage of germination. Uh, occurs you you dry them and then before you dry them before the actual germination so that is also another seed treatment purposes that is what we didn't cover in the previous uh show segment session okay and also uh when you want to control pests and diseases in your farm especially when it comes to the maize seedlings or the maize plants Mm -hmm. you have to Ensure that you know where you're planting your maize. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you might want to plant your maize so that you harvest them green. Mm-hmm. You might want to plant your maize so that you harvest them dry. Mm-hmm. Or some plant maize for fodder. So let's talk about planting maize for fodder. Mm-hmm. When you're planting maize for fodder, you don't have to, you don't have to deal with the pests. Mm-hmm. You just leave the pests to enjoy themselves. Because yes. at the end of the day, uh, you'll be taking those maize plants and cutting them for your animals especially cows cutting them for your cows and uh, the pests are good for cows yes. actually you mm-hmm. don't have to interfere with them the cows can as well eat the pests they are really helpful they add fat yeah and they are very <laughs> nutritious to the cows to the cows you find that your cows have eaten a lot of caterpillars in that <laughs> <laughs> and they enjoy those fodder. caterpillars by the way yeah and you find out that they are very fat that's why you usually find a chicken eating caterpillars yeah. and they grow very fast but <laughs> i don't even want to see a chicken eating caterpillar because i don't <laughs> think i'll ever dress that chicken it's better <laughs> that chicken eats the caterpillar chicken, when I'm not sick. The, the chickens that are just left loitering around they eat, they eat all kind of stuff 
Like they eat all kind of stuff until I'm like, oh, did they, will I eat this chicken? <laughs> but again, when it is uh, it is ready, mm. okay, you just eat without even thinking. It was eating this kind of a thing. Even the cows, <laughs> even the cows, when they just eat the caterpillars, you can't avoid eating meat because you never know which cow ate which caterpillar. But those pests are really, really nutritious and good for the cows, not for human beings. They are good for the cows. So when you're growing your crops for fodder, don't bother. Don't stress yourself. But you know, when attacker kuwa is pest, you are killing the animal's food. Yeah. Yeah, and the cow's food. Yeah, just like Mary said mm. that uh, know how to, during story, you are talking about it, right? Mm. Know that, make sure that you dry your, if they are for commercial purposes or mm. if, you are for, if they are for your own good, if for, uh, for your family or for selling, mm. make sure you dry them well. Yeah. Because you know what, there are diseases out there that may affect that plant. Especially like, when you don't dry the maize well, mm-hmm. weevils are there. You always ask yourself, in fact, let me talk about this. You, you always ask yourself where weevils come from. Mm-hmm. My friend, those evils that you, you ate in high school, when you went to school uh, in Nyanza or even Western, mm-hmm. you know what, what I'm talking about. You, you, even up to now, people still eat those weevils. Actually, I schooled in Nyanza. Mm-hmm. And we used to have, we used to eat githeri like almost every day. Mm-hmm. And our githeris were full of weevils. <laughs> and we used to eat those weevils. <laughs> I was telling you those were protein back then. Yeah, in those, back then. Actually, in primary school, I took weevils. In high school, in githeri. <laughs> what? Yeah, that is, that, that that is the disadvantages <laughs> of, of making your maize uh, moist. Yeah. You're not drying them completely. And packing them the right way. Yeah, and you know, far from that, there is a more dangerous uh, thing that affects your maize. Mm. That is aflatoxins. Mm. Do you know, have you heard of aflatoxins? I've heard of it. You can tell us more about it. That is as a result of uh, planting, like as a result of uh, making sure, as a result of carelessness, Mm. of not uh, taking care of your crops. So aflatoxins Mm. is an aspergillus fungi. It's caused by aspergillus fungi. Mm. So aflatoxins can occur during uh, harvest and also during storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it can occur during harvest or during storage. During storage, that is how we were, that is just like the way we were talking about Mm. that uh, if you if you are not drying your crops mm-hmm. uh, well, you can be affected by these aflatoxins. And you know, they are not all, only dangerous to plants. Mm-hmm. They are also dangerous to human beings. Mm. Very dangerous. So, so the in, fungi, one way, in one way or the other, those ways that we used to take in high school were harmful to us because they were not being dried. I've never seen those ways being dried outside and they were just kept in stores in these normal sacks. Yeah, that is very the dangerous. That have politics. Mm-hmm. So hey, if you, if you schooled in Nyanza or Western or if at all you took that type of maze, you are strong <laughs> because yeah, you are strong. taking you are you they they were harmful to your your health and you still survived. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, so mm-hmm. ensure ensure you dry your maze if you don't want aflatoxins to get mm-hmm. into your maze and also weevils. Mm-hmm. So the fungi that produces these aflatoxins, mm-hmm. that, is, that is the aspergillus fungi, they mostly live in warm and humid conditions. So when you store your plants in a, in a humid conditions, uh, not even plants, mm-hmm. when you store your maize in humid conditions, of course they will be affected with aflatoxins mm-hmm. because that is the area they prefer. They prefer that area that is humid, moist. that is warm, that mm-hmm. is moist. So that is... That is something that is very dangerous. And you know, mm-hmm. it can cause, I have said that it can cause serious health problems mm-hmm. to both animals mm-hmm. and human beings. So humans, uh, what it can cause to humans is acute poisonings, mm-hmm. poisoning. Mm-hmm. So chronic exposure to aflatoxins can also cause liver damage and cancer. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't want to get such kind of diseases. Okay, before you move on, mm-hmm. uh, I just remembered a story that really happened, I think, some months ago. Mm-hmm. There were so many cases of stomach ache and uh, and even deaths were there mm-hmm. uh, in Mukumu Girls. I don't know if you saw the story. In Mukumu Girls, mm-hmm. there was some, I think there was food poisoning. Uh, after learning about this uh, aflatoxin, mm-hmm. I tend to feel that maybe, just maybe, uh, that is what caused all that. Because... Uh, 
another another friend of mine actually was at the time with girls passed on because of that mm-hmm. so maybe maybe it was because of aflatoxin because when you when you are keen in these high schools most of them they don't do the maids well but i kwa kwa sababu at the end of the day they'll be using it each and every day and the maids will be reducing yes. so i think that that may be must have been the reason uh, that made uh, those students sick and even some of them passed on yeah and you know mm-hmm. uh, these things i've also experienced at first hand mm. uh, we were in primary school there was a time we were cooked gideri mm-hmm. and then we ate the gideri and it was time to go back to class mm-hmm. we went to class very happy very full mm-hmm. and then we stayed in class for like a uh, for like uh, an hour or so that means mm-hmm. and the first person started saying he has a stomachache mm-hmm. and then the second person the third person and then it was the whole school having wow. stomachache we were crying and we didn't go to class even the teachers had stomachache mm-hmm. they had to release us and i am doubting that it was this kind of these aflatoxins mm-hmm. and if i haven't come today here i could have known that that type <laughs> of thing could have happened was happening to me long Back time ago then. Hmm. And you know you, you you don't want to get uh cancer. Cancer yeah. is a dangerous disease mm-hmm. that is killing a lot of people and it is very expensive. Mm-hmm. You can't treat cancer just like that if you are very poor. Mm-hmm. Because if you can't afford Not even if you are poor. Surgery, cancer cancer even kills rich people. Yeah, it kills rich it, people. It's a disease for everybody. So it's just for you to be careful to avoid things like aflatoxin. Yeah. You just have to not to be ignorant actually don't be ignorant this, this that is what i'm talking about don't be ignorant ensure that you do your meds well so that uh things like aflatoxin does do not get into your body just because you didn't store your meds well mm-hmm. you didn't dry them well yeah before before taking them in we are still live on facebook at a farmers media we are live on youtube at a farmers media on our website www.farmersmedia.com and also on twitter at a farmers with the z underscore media Con- continue sending us your comments asking us questions if at all we can't answer all of them today tomorrow hey. is another day because tomorrow we'll still be continuing with this topic and uh we might answer all your questions tomorrow if at all we don't manage to answer them today but yeah. we'll try our best we are here to read your comments uh give us your feedbacks according to what you would learn and also what you'd like us to talk about mm-hmm. welcome welcome again welcome once more to mid morning show the one and only show that fuels our farms mm-hmm. the one and only show that you can be able to take to get the deep understanding of what really fuel our farms so we are going to continue with the aflatoxins mm-hmm. uh, we were talking about what it causes to human uh, to you to humans mm-hmm. so to you must be careful don't be like uh, don't ins- don't make yourself have that chronic exposure mm-hmm. because these aflatoxins are going to destroy your life for no reason yeah. and yet you had these preventive measures that you could have put in place mm-hmm. to prevent this kind of a disease so mm-hmm. uh liver damage they can damage your liver mm-hmm. you have you are not even an alcoholic you are someone who is not uh, prone to such thing you don't smoke yeah you don't smoke you don't eat tobacco you don't consume those things that can cause liver damage but you find yourself with these aflatoxins these fungi that has entered into your liver and then eaten your liver actually actually you know you can go to the hospital and you're told you have a uh, cancer or even that liver damage and you start wondering ah when did you, i get this yes, cancer i've not been smoking i don't take hard drugs i don't drink alcohol just don't be ignorant mm mm-hmm. mm So also in animals mm-hmm. uh, in animals like cows or any other thing it can co- it also causes liver damage to animals mm-hmm. not only liver damage it also lowers their productivity and also uh, reduce growth and death mm-hmm. and can lead to death of the animals mm-hmm. so be careful of these aflatoxins and be careful of how you store your food or how you harvest your food yeah and how you dry your food Actually the only way we can round this up mm-hmm. is uh by saying don't be ignorant first of all mm-hmm. ensure you dry your maize well mm-hmm. and store them that is that is if you're growing your maize uh to take to the market 
maybe you have so much meat because I know those who are just growing their meat to eat at home, mm -hmm. they don't grow so much. Mm -hmm. But when you're growing so much meat to take to the market, you have to look for uh, a very big field to dry your maize because uh, the moment you are drying them in small small quantities, that's that's when uh, they not dry all of them, or some of them will not dry well. Yes, and uh, that one will bring this uh, aflatoxin that yeah. you are talking about. Mm -hmm. And also to prevent your food stuff from being uh, affected by these types of diseases or pests, make sure that the packaging also matters. Mm -hmm. How you package your food. Make sure it is packaged in a way that no insects will be able to evade or enter inside. Also, no anything that is moist that can go inside it and ruin it. So be careful on how you package your harvest. Actually, there are specific bags that you use to package. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen them. Yeah, I've seen The ones them. that have polythenes. I think they're like two polythenes. There's a sack and then there are these two polythenes. Mm -hmm. So you just uh, put your dried maize, already dried maize, inside the the third the second polythene because you have the sack the first polythene and then the second polythene so you put your dry your dry maize inside the second polythene mm -hmm. and then you ensure that there's no air inside there when mm -hmm. you want to tie when you want to tie the sack ensure that all the air is removed from the polythene in order for uh, air not to circulate in your maize because the moment air is circulating inside there Definitely, uh, it will be moist, mm -hmm. and that is what will bring evils. And you know, evils, evils, they are capable of uh, of biting even the sack mm -hmm. and getting inside the maze. You you will you will not even notice. Uta scared usauti. I don't know if you've had so many evils <laughs> making noise. Yes, I've had that. Yeah. Uta scared usauti, and now you start wondering. Ah, when you what happens? It packaged my maze well. You didn't package. You tried to package it well, but you didn't manage to package it well because you left some air yeah. to circulate yeah. inside those sacks. Yeah, an example of that is the the sack. There is a sack of maize that uh, the farmers uh, used to to scare away the birds. Mm -hmm. I saw it in several farms. Mm -hmm. In that sack, before the sack is emptied, mm -hmm. you can find that there is a colorless. Uh, there is a colorless uh, polythene mm. inside mm -hmm. which contains the seed and then the upper one mm -hmm. is the that sack they used to to scare away the birds mm -hmm. so that sack it is very beautiful you can see it from outside even from the inside oh. it is well packaged you see mm -hmm. so there is a colorless one inside and then there is another one the opaque one mm. on the outside the sack yeah you uh -huh. see so it is very protective even tearing it apart is very hard there is nothing that can go inside. Any insect cannot manage to go through that sack. So the farmers in our village used to put those in sticks after finishing uh, seed seed uh, planting. Planting seeds, they take those bags and then put them on the sticks in different uh, positions in mm -hmm. the farm. They can put it in the middle of the farm or at the edges. So, so that is how you create your scarecrows. Yeah, like when they put like that, the birds think that that is the, a head of a person. So they think that is the head. So they tend to wait for that head to move. <laughs> but it doesn't. Because they supply it in different uh, in different, uh, in different locations of the farm. Mm -hmm. So they, they tie it to ensure that it doesn't fly away. Oh. So they tie it and then they position it in different uh, locations. Mm. And then a maize. Mm -hmm. If you want to prevent the maize from the farm, another simple method is just from the birds, especially the areas that uh, the birds are usually many. We just take the nylons and then tie on your maize uh, on your maize cobs. Cobs, mm -hmm. yeah, cobs. You tie you tie them there, and then uh, the birds won't eat anything because okay. they are tied in black in black polythene paper. In my area, we have so many monkeys. I don't know why my area have monkeys and we are not even yet. We are not next to a wildlife reserve or a game park. That we is have, also that is also like a pest. You yeah, know? monkeys, monkeys, eh. Those monkeys are so stubborn, by the way. When you when you when you plant maize, actually, them they eat even vegetables. Mm -hmm. Other sukuma wiki, those monkeys they just come, destroy them. I don't know if they eat them, but they're destroyers. Monkeys mm -hmm. can also destroy your maize. Those, <laughs> that one that one is a big pest. Apart from elephants, we talk about elephants in a mm -hmm. few. But monkeys they can come to your farm. They eat all the maize, and you will not even realize that your maize were eaten. When you come to harvest, <laughs> when you come to harvest, that is when you realize that huh, 
there were monkeys here and they ate the maize. I've, I've, I've still not yet far found out how we can prevent monkeys from entering our farm. The only way I see the I see people from my village doing is just throwing stones at them. And you know monkeys are like human beings. When you throw a stone at a monkey, you just run away and then come back. And even dance for it you. It can even take that stone and, and throw it back. back. Yes. Yeah. So monkeys are also dangerous. You can tell us in the comment section if at all you know how to scare away monkeys because monkeys are not scared of scarecrows. <laughs> And then there is the biggest enemy of our plants. That is the elephant. elephant. You all know that elephants are like there is nothing to stop elephants except yeah. the the garden. We have yeah. okay. We have recently uh, uh recently a farmers media launched uh, the garden repellent mm -hmm. uh, that is being traded out. Uh, it's a repellent that can. Uh, that scare away like elephants. Mm -hmm. I think the moment the elephants smell it or something, they just they, they don't get to your shamba. Yeah. So they launched it recently. It's a very good product. Yes. It's a, it's called Garden. It's an elephant repellent. So maybe next time we'll show it to you and we'll come with it to the show. Yes. It and was I know. recently launched and it's a it's a very good product that uh, can help scare away elephants. Maybe with time they also get to we'll, we'll also get to invent uh other repellent that will scare away other pests. But for now, uh the garden repellent is the best for elephants. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know when you grow hectares of maize and uh you are there, you don't know what to do about it. You know elephants are prone to such kind of areas. Just contact us. You will get the elephant repellent. Uh, the it is garden. Garden, yes. Garden. You can you can you can get these elephant elephant repellent mm. to so that you can scare away these elephants mm. and so that you can be able to continue uh, planting your maize peacefully without any other problem. Actually, garden repellent is so good for for those farmers who have big farms, big mm -hmm. acres of farms. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it can really help a lot because when you're a farmer, you can't just and you have uh, so many acres of land, you can't just uh, be going around scaring an elephant. In fact, an elephant is a very big animal that it, it's not even scared of a chopper. Mm -hmm. You can imagine a chopper coming down. Uh, we once clip, played that clip sometime back. You, you can imagine an, a chopper coming down and the elephant is not scared. It's mm -hmm. like the elephant wants to fight the chopper. So Garden repellent is the best. It's the best solution that can help farmers with big acres of land. But if you feel uh, you also need to scare away elephants in your small farms, you can still use it. It's not only for big acres of land. Yeah, and you know what? We are not only telling you about garden today. We are not going to introduce to you about garden repellent today. Today we are ensuring that you are going home with something useful. And we are going to introduce to you about planting up. Yeah. Yeah. Before mm -hmm. we continue even talking about the soil treatment, mm -hmm. we are going to continue introducing you to these kind of services or apps that are going to help you. Apart from Gladin that repels the elephant, we have the Plantics app. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, an app that uh, an app that helps farmers diagnose they diagnose their disease and treat crops without problems. So to improve, uh, and they also improve productivity and provide farming knowledge. Wh how do they improve this productivity? Mm -hmm. Plantix is just an app. You just install in your phone. Just go and search for Plantix. And it's then it's free, it. actually. It's free, mm -hmm. very free. Because uh, when you install this app, uh, you will be able to diagnose your plants without any problems. Because it can diagnose many plants, more than 680 plants different plants different diseases yeah different mm -hmm. plants and diseases mm -hmm. so when you take maybe your maize plant is affected in a very bad way you see that uh, this maize is affected in a way that i'm not familiar with just take a picture and then you upload it answers you uh, all your questions and they have experts who are very uh who are very into these uh into these uh information mm -hmm. about the farming techniques the types of different crops mm -hmm. and also they offer treatment suggestions and these suggestions always help farmers and a lot of farmers have brought these testimonies mm -hmm. good testimony testimonies mm -hmm. about these uh, plantings up and um it answers your questions it doesn't take even five seconds 
10 seconds or it's one fast. minute. Mm-hmm. It's very fast. Just in a few seconds, you have received the diagnosis and the recommendation of what you should use mm-hmm. to curb this type of a disease. So to ensure this, you know, also in that Plantix app, they also have a library. Mm. You can go to their library and know more about this Plantix app. Mm-hmm. So this app is efficient and user-friendly. And uh, this is where you identify crop diseases and also find both chemical and biological treatments. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to identify this uh, biological treatment is good for my crop. Uh, this chemical treatment is good for this type of disease that is that has been affecting my plant. Mm-hmm. So I always encourage you use Plantix app because it is free. Yeah. It doesn't cost you any money. It is free. It, all you have is just you have a smartphone and then install the app. Yeah, yeah. Okay, at least you've educated us about Plantix. If you're a mm-hmm. farmer, please, and you have a smartphone, go and download the Plantix app. Uh, it will it will also make you look like an expert. Yes. The moment you're using it on a daily basis, when you see something weird on your on your crop, mm-hmm. uh, maybe when you see a disease and you don't know the name and you don't know how to handle it, you can easily take a photo, upload, just like Regina said, mm-hmm. upload it. After uploading it, you'll get to know mm, this is the kind of disease that is attacking yeah. my maize mm-hmm. and this is the solution so that next time when you're planting you know how to handle uh, your maize to a point that the uh, the disease or the pest will not attack it yeah and you know with this kind of knowledge with this kind of information your yields will be able to improve mm-hmm. and you'll be able to have a good harvest because you have already known what type of uh, what type of measures you need to take to get rid of your of these kind of diseases? What type of fruits is recommendable in this type of uh, climate change in, in this type of weather? Yes. So through Plantix, you'll be able to find solutions to your crops mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. Okay, we are still live on YouTube at Farmers Media on Facebook at Farmers Media on our website www.afarmersmedia.com and on Twitter at Farmers with the Z underscore media. Continue sending your feedbacks, your comments, your questions. We are here to answer uh, all of them. Uh, tomorrow also we'll be continuing with this same topic. This is a very wide topic. We can't cover all of it today. So mm-hmm. tomorrow we'll be continuing with the same topic. Yeah, same time. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow same time we'll continue with, with the same topic. Uh, but uh, you know, there's different steps uh, that we follow when planting maize. I don't know if you you are familiar with that. We yeah, have different I'm, steps. I'm familiar with that, of course. <laughs> yes, I've planted maize before, oh. so I can be familiar with such things. Uh-huh. But I know mm-hmm. someone somewhere, someone watching us somewhere, mm-hmm. or someone. Uh, really wants to plant maize mm. but she she or he doesn't he or she doesn't know what can i do what steps am i to take you know there are others who are not familiar with maize planting mm. there are others who haven't even uh seen maize plant their whole lives mm. you know there are, are people sure? like that yeah maybe people from the coast <laughs> no you can find <laughs> that they are from always the coast, those they love right Mm-hmm. Not even people from the coast. Mm-hmm. You can find I've met people who haven't even seen a maize plant in their lives. Mm. They yeah. only eat maize. They don't know where. Yeah, the maize they eat from. maize. They have seen only online, but they haven't seen like physically. In real life. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. So here, <laughs> yeah, if you have never seen a maize plant, uh, you can go to our website. We have posted some pictures of maize plants, and mm-hmm. also, it's not even you can go to. You can visit us. By the way, we planted a lot of maize here mm-hmm. in a farmer's media so visit us and see our farm and uh, you can take pictures and tell people yes I've, I've seen this maize plant i'm telling those who have never seen my maize plant because i've expe- I've, I've met people who have not seen actually i just thought that only whites maybe don't know these things <laughs> not even white whites know some whites know some whites doesn't know i've met a I'm white just... i've met a white who didn't know what sukumawiki looks like yeah, and and we, we were giving white. her sukumawiki to eat, and she was asking <laughs> us what it was. I, I don't know what, what type of kelp they maybe, take there, may, but maybe he never saw any kelp growing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have steps for planting maize. First mm-hmm. of all, before you plant maize, you have to follow all these steps in order for you to get a good harvest, mm-hmm. uh, especially when you're a farmer with planting to take to the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to follow these steps. First of all, you have to select your location. Mm-hmm. 
uh, you can't you can't just be somewhere. You just want to grow maize, and you don't know what kind of soil is there, uh, or maybe you you you're not familiar with the weather so well. You've just moved in into a new place, and you just want to plant plant maize without uh, even getting to know uh, maize can survive under which conditions. <coughs> First of all, maize requires a sunny location yes. because they, they they need enough sunlight. Mm -hmm. That's why we encourage uh, people who come from sunny, uh, sunny areas like you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I yeah. come from a sunny area. So every, yes. every day I say that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> because maize, maize, the maize plants, the maize seeds, they need uh, enough sunlight. Mm -hmm. So if you're from a semi arid area, uh, just uh, know that you can plant maize and definitely they do well only if you test your soil. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you, you know this maize, uh, the, you have uh, so much maize in mm -hmm. your place? I don't know. No, we don't have so much maize mm -hmm. though. Why, you, people are why are you not maize. taking advantage of People of are the planting sun? maize, yes, but of the sun, but no water. Yes, we have sun, mm -hmm. but there's no rain. You don't have rivers? No. See, there are more rivers. rivers, yes, mm -hmm. but they have dried up. You can't, uh, you can't just plant maize like that. How about lakes? How, how about lakes? The lake is far away from where we live. So you, you can't commit from one place to another each and every day. Mm. And you know, again, when planting maize, I'm going to add on that. When planting maize, uh, you should also, uh, the spacing also matters. Mm. Because uh, the other plant, they can prevent the others from have, getting that sunlight. Mm. You see, they, they they make the shadow, and then preventing the 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 others from uh, from getting sunlight. And you know, maize vary. They have variety of maize. Mm -hmm. They vary from different uh, varieties. Mm -hmm. So there are other maize that are wide. The ones that are taking a bigger space. There are others that are not taking a bigger space. Mm -hmm. So when spacing, you should also consider the the variety of maize you are using. Because they are also competing with nutrients. Mm -hmm. If you plant them close, they are close. Like you plant this one here, this one here, this one here. They are competing for nutrients. So when they are competing for nutrients, they can't get enough nutrients. Because they are both competing. I want this nutrient. I want they'll, this get nutrient. It, they'll get it half-half. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also the spread of diseases can occur. Because yeah. they are close, close. together. Mm -hmm. So the disease, the pest can come from this plant. And move this very plant. fast to the like, next one. Like the caterpillars, these, <laughs> they move very slow. So they can't fly. Yeah. So when the leaves are close to, to each other, they can be able to trans to, to move from one plant to another. Just Isn't using it? the leaves, especially if the leaves are, are connected. Yeah. And also the, 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 the harvesting. Mm. You see, uh, if you, you are going to use, you have a uh, acres of lands. Of course, you can't go and picking or getting, uh, maybe you have 10 acres of land. Mm. You can't just employ people, uh, we are going to pick these uh, crops. Mm. And you know that they are not going to make it happen because uh, they they even take a longer time, a longer period of time harvesting them. So with this, you have to, during harvesting, when you space your, your maize well, you'll be able to harvest very easily mm. with the use of maybe you are using a farm machinery. Mm. So if you are not using farm machinery and the maize are very close together like this, and then you want to harvest, it will be even hard for the farm machinery to harvest this kind of yeah. maize because it will slow down the harvesting. But if there is space, then the harvesting will be very fast and be able to get your crops on time. Okay, mm -hmm. at least you've enlightened us on spacing. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you're planting maize after selecting your location, uh, secondly, uh, soil preparation is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, prepare the soil by tilling it to a depth of about 6 to 8 inches and then you, uh, you remove weeds that yes. might interfere. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're preparing the soil, that is if you want to plant maize, ensure that you till uh, to a depth of about six to eight inches. Yes. That figure is very important. Six mm -hmm. to eight inches in order for you to plant well. Make sure you till six to eight inches. Yeah. And also, as you're doing that, you remove the weeds. 
Yes. That might interfere with your plants. Yeah, and you know that uh, tilling soil is not just about all that. Mm. It also involves breaking the compacted soil. Mm. You know, the soil is always like when you dig the your garden, there is also the larger particles, mm. the ones that are very large, in the size of a very big block. Mm. So break the those uh, those uh, compatible uh, particles. Mm -hmm. Break them to ensure that there is a good spacing in your soil mm -hmm. to ensure because uh, soil tillage also improves soil aeration. Mm -hmm. The soil be able to get enough oxygen. Uh -huh. That's your plant will grow healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you also ensure that you test your soil. That is the third step. Mm -hmm. Ensure you test your soil. Soil, soil testing is very, very important. Uh, Maize thrives in a slightly acidic soil, just like Ayan had said before, with a pH of 6.0 to 7.5, based on so, based on the results of the soil. Mm -hmm. So if you had tested your soil before and you know the results of the soil, this time round when you want to plant maize, ensure you test your soil again so that you know the pH of your soil, because maize can grow well uh, within a pH of 6.0 mm -hmm. to 7.5. Yeah. You enlighten that point. Uh, the you already enlightened the point of yes, pH. Yes, yes, yes. And also, another point is mm -hmm. soil drainage uh, improvement. Mm -hmm. Improve your soil drainage. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there is waterlogged soil. Mm -hmm. This waterlogged soil mm -hmm. sometimes cause soil erosion. And you, you don't want your soil to get uh, to, to be infected by soil erosion. Mm -hmm. Because it will carry away. Your, if your soil is waterlogged, mm -hmm. it, it has a uh, waterlogged means it has uh, so much water mm -hmm. until the plants start floating or what. So the, your plants will be, will be swept away. Uh -huh. If the soil are waterlogged, you, the roots of your plants become weak. So they are going to be carried away through soil erosion. Mm -hmm. So make sure that your soil drainage is... Um, is improved you can also use raised beds uh, to improve your the drainage system mm -hmm. so raised beds when you you put it raised beds mm -hmm. the water will not be able to enter to your plants very easily mm -hmm. making it waterlogged so it is also good to use soil uh, seed beds you just talked about uh plants floating and mm -hmm. they just remembered what i had seen <laughs> mm -hmm. you know there was a time uh, in Lake Victoria, I don't know if you heard of that. There was a time mm -hmm. uh, there's, there was so much water has in Lake Victoria. Mm -hmm. That's why you, when you just uh, when you just talked about uh, floating plants, it just reminded me of Lake Victoria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, Manu, oh, I have okay. to talk about the lake. <laughs> okay, and guys, continue watching us. Continue tuning in. Continue. Sending us messages and your questions mm. because this is a farmer's home, a mm. farmer's media. This is home where we connect, learn, and grow. And Titus, wherever you are, you're saying, you're watching. Titus, 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 Titus Ole, Olole. Hey, your name is her. Titus, thank you so much for tuning in. Continue watching. We are going to continue educating you each and every day. Yes. So after testing your soil, you should also ensure that you choose the right seeds. You just you mm -hmm. told us before that there are different varieties of seeds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have already talked about that. So due to the time is running, so we are going to talk about uh, another point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next one is also planting time. That's according to the time and season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are different seasons uh, for planting maize. That is, mm -hmm. uh, if your area, mm -hmm. you don't just plant maize all the time. There mm -hmm. are seasons for planting maize. Actually, you're the one who was educating me on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are different planting seasons. So ensure, when you want to plant maize, it's that season of planting maize. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is also spacing that you talked about. Mm -hmm. You're really enlightened on the spacing. Yes. And uh, also watering and weeding. I don't want to talk so much about that because tomorrow is also another day. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow we'll get to tell you more about the the pests yes. that we'll, we'll clarify on the pests that attack maize. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we'll also have an expert 
that will be educating us more about our topic. Well, uh, I don't know if you have any last words. Uh, before last words, we have Kabir Zango. Hello, Kabir Zango. Hope you are watching us right now. Kabir Zango is saying, saying mm -hmm. watching from Gabasawa, local government of Kano State. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> we are so, so honored. Much. We are so humbled. Thank you for watching us. Continue watching us. We'll be here each and every day, same time, same day. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were also talking about prevention, um, uh, how to control these uh, pests and diseases. Mm. And uh, we mentioned several uh, other things to do mm. while controlling this soil, uh, while controlling these pests and diseases. I think I want to cut you short on that. Maybe mm -hmm. that will explain more on that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let me just mention a few and okay. then uh, close. So there is crop rotation. We are going to talk to, about it tomorrow. There is harvesting practices. There is drying and storage. And there is education and training, breeding. We are going to talk about that tomorrow. Anyway, we are running on time. Uh, we had an amazing session. Yeah, we had an amazing session. And uh, definitely, uh, huh, each and every day, we always have our proverb of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today, our proverb of the day is, if you tickle the earth with a hoe, she laughs with bumper harvest. If you tickle the earth with a hoe, she laughs with the bumper harvest. That's all we had for you today in our mid-morning show. I've been your host, Mary Oswero. And I've been your co-host, Regina Ayanai. Have a lovely day. Part of any shamba lies in its soil. Because soil is so precious, it needs to be managed really carefully. A good place to start is with a soil test. This will tell you how healthy your soil is, its pH levels, what type of soil it is, which crops you can grow in your soil, and advice on which fertilizer is best to use. If you follow the soil test recommendations, it can boost your yields. So, how do you take a soil test sample? Firstly, dig up soil samples. Use a soil auger or panga to take a sample one feet deep in a zigzag pattern across your shamba. You will need at least 10 samples. Mix all the different samples together in a bucket. The soil is now ready to be scanned and tested. You can find out about how to get your soil tested by contacting your extension officer. Alternatively, contact a Ministry of Agriculture research station near you. A soil test costs about as much as one bag of maize. You should do a soil test at least every three to five years. The changing climate we will see more pests and diseases and as smart farmers know when it comes to pests and diseases prevention is better than cure some of the most common pests in maize are fall armyworm stem borer and striger weed do the following to reduce pests and diseases in your maize plant certified seeds keep your farm weed free Protect your crop every season and scout for pests and diseases regularly and treat them as you see them. Common maize diseases are head smart, maize lethal necrosis disease, MLND, and leaf streak. All three are caused by viruses and have no chemical treatment. Signs of maize lethal necrotic disease or MLND include drying of leaves, rapid yellowing of leaves, no tasseling, unusual or no ears, and rotting cobs. If you notice an attack, uproot the affected plant and burn them away from the field. 